Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review and today we're back on to a local beer again from the local brewery now this one has been recommended to me I've tried this before ages ago a good few years back and I tried a couple of them together and I can't remember, some of them were quite nice and some were okay and that type of stuff. And then I was at a neighbour's house and they had a selection of them. So I tried them again and I can't remember which ones they were, but some were bloody awful. And I kind of flirted with the beers from this brewery now and again and sometimes they're good and other times they're thinking the same beer seriously what the fuck has happened you know it's like that and uh, the last ones I've done I've done two of them so far and I just found them unnaturally sweet from from my kind of opinion and kind of preference I just found them a bit too sweet so today we're doing the Otter Ale. Now, one of the viewers that likes this beer, and every time they've had it, they've enjoyed it and everything else, which is fine, fair enough. But I'm not saying that this, this is the problem with this brewery, the Otter Breweries. They can actually brew some very nice beers. The problem I found is, is the consistency. That it fluctuates. To the point is it can fluctuate thinking, well, what the hell, that, that, that's not the same beer. Um, and I think, yeah, there is a fluctuation between batches and maybe between seasons as well. Maybe that's the, the thing, whatever. And maybe it might be to do with um, the ingredients supplier so maybe it's not really down to the brewery maybe it's down to basically the suppliers of certain ingredients that maybe that fluctuates at different times of the, the year or whatever I don't know but at the end of the day I've I avoid it I'll be totally honest every time I see it I usually avoid it now because I've had you know for every good one I've had I've had a bad one from that point of view and I've got to be honest and uh, the two that I've done so far, while they've been fine, they're all right beers, they're just, there's this kind of strange kind of unnatural sweetness that uh, has kind of ruined it for me, kind of put me off, which is a new one, because I don't remember them being overly sweet previously. I don't, there was other situations that were causing problems. It wasn't sweetness from what I remember, but anyway, I like to go in there with, a, with a, an open mind and uh, at the time I wasn't really paying attention when I was trying them out. I, I, although I've got them at the Otter Bright, um, I never really kind of enjoyed that much, um, which is supposed to be kind of the lager beer. I just found it was not my cup of tea and uh, they've now got this kind of strange and natural sweetness to it which i don't remember it having but i've got him out of all the ones i've tried otter bright was my least favorite in the past and i would probably say out of the two i've tried <sighs> this is kind of strange it's actually was better out of the two but anyway let's see what this one's like let, let, I, I like to go in and I want it to be a good beer. So I want this to be a good beer. I don't want this to be a bad beer. I want this to be a good beer. Um, because I paid for the bloody thing. So of course I want it to be a good beer. I don't want it to be piss water because at the end of the day I'm just wasting my bloody money. So look, that's it. It's a typical Scotsman. First and foremost is that I've paid for the bloody thing. I want it to be good. I want to get my money's worth. There you go, just like any other normal person. So there's my first thing. So when people think, oh, you're going in there to slay a beer, you've got a kind of preconception of, of what it's going to be like. No, I can tell you what history I've maybe had with a beer, if I've got any history at all with it. 
but I still wanted to make a beer because at the end of the day I don't want to slate brewers and I don't want to slate their products but if they're crap they're crap but if they're good I'll say they're good regardless I don't have any ulterior motive or things like that if I'm paying for something I want it to be the best it can be and the higher score I can give it and the happier I'm going to be so anyway there's some spill in the back so let's see if we can get, get down to it there we go so relaxing with an otter is a pastime enjoyed by Devonians and visitors alike. Grapples. I think that's what they call them. Grapples. Not visitors. Grapples. That's what they call the tourists. Now it's in bottles. Otter, otter ale. Otter? What the fuck am I talking about? Otter ale can also be enjoyed in the comfort of your own home. It's a real fireside beer that blends some of Devon's best Maris Otter malt, English Fuggles and Challenger hops and is then lovingly brewed with our very own water from the herd springs of the River Otter. The perfect taste of Devon. There you go. Well, hopefully it will be. Good thing is, there's no hint of happiness. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Don't get me started with that one. So let's crack it open. And see how it pours. There we go. There we go. Right. As you can see, it's a kind of nice kind of amber colour. Kind of dark amber. Not too bad, nice and clear. See, trying to be as positive as possible. Look, even a smell for the thumbnail. It's not very good, it's not very good. Smell of white. Doesn't it? Any smell really? Maybe a hint of malt, but I'm struggling. There's very little aroma there at all, if any. Maybe a hint of dried fruit, maybe, but it's just so weak, you're struggling to smell anything. It really is. So, from aroma front, kind of zilch, really. Just nothing there. But you can see there's a nice bit of lacing in the glass. Head's kind of buggered off, but it hasn't gone no pond, so it's not too bad. So let's see what it tastes like. Well, the first thing I've noticed, which is a very good positive, there's no silly kind of strange underlying sweetness to this. So the two previous beers that I tried there was a kind of a quite a strong sweetness to it, a bit too strong for my liking, anyway. I just felt it spoiled both beers to a certain degree. The second one being spoiled even more to the point that it was getting quite sickening. But even to the first one which is the Auto Bright, which isn't one of my favourites anyway. Um, it was affecting that quite bad, but not as bad as it was the second one. This doesn't have it. No. Well, I'll be totally honest. Out of the three I've tried, and I might quit in this one just now. I might, might, might not try any more for a while. I might just leave this one as the kind of last one. 
for a while. Out of the three so far, this is the best, quite easily. Um, it's a different beer completely, and it would have it would going by what I've tasted so far in this review series with my local brewery, which is the the Otter Brewery, which is just outside Honington, it's in Lippet. So it is. Um, out of the three I've tried, the first two felt that they were from the same brewery and they had accents that you could basically identify coming from the same brewery and especially that underlying sweetness that I didn't enjoy. That just kind of really handcuffed the two of them together thinking, yes, yeah, they've come from the same brewery. This one tastes as if it's from a different brewery. So it does. This is nicer, a nicer balance to it. But there's a nice bitterness in the aftertaste as well, which I'm enjoying. I do like it. I like my beer like I like my, my women. Absolutely better. <laughs> I don't know if they come that way or, or do I turn them that way, I honestly really don't know, but I know women basically, they don't have to be around me very long before they become kind of bitter and twisted towards me, and it's probably all justified, that's why I drink beer anyway, so fuck off, you know, if you don't like me, sort it. But yes, getting on to the beer, I do like, I like malty sweetness, but I also like it to be balanced off with a bit of bitterness. And I don't like it if there's too much multi sweetness and there's no kind of counteracting bitterness. I also don't like it if there's too much bitterness and not enough kind of balancing with kind of multi sweetness. I do like that. I do like a bit of yin and yang. And I do like a bit of yang with my yang. And I'm quite partial to show off my yang. If somebody's going to offer me a bit of yang, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? But yes. I do like a bit of kind of balance to my beer, I like my yin and my yang basically. And if there's too much yin and not enough yang, then I'm not a happy bunny, and vice versa. So that's what I'm really trying to say. So yes, I like I like a good balanced beer, and I'm a bit of a sucker for that. And for much as much as I like a multi sweetness, I do like a bitterness. And I'm quite happy if the bitterness comes from hops, or if the bitterness comes from other things like, um, well, like a good thing, example with stouts is isn't so much the hops that give you a kind of like the bitterness. You can get that kind of uh, dark chocolatey bitterness with kind of darker beers like about the porter or a stout, or you get slightly coffee bitterness and things like that. And again, that's to do with the kind of roasted malts and things like the real dark roasted malts that are giving that kind of slightly molasses bitterness as well and things like that. So it doesn't always have to come from the hops. But I still like that balance. And with brewing beer myself, and I'm sure other people that do brew beers will understand that getting that balance is quite hard and difficult. And once you do get it and you can replicate it, then you're on to a winner. The problem is, though, is the minute you go into a different recipe or you try a different style of beer, then you really start from scratch again because you can apply everything you've learned from your last beer you've managed to kind of perfect. And then it just goes like, well, no, that doesn't work here. And then you just got to start again, kind of trial and error and, and getting things the way you want it. So, from that point of view, this seems to have a lot more balance to it. And it is, in general, more suited to my kind of style of beer. So let's kind of break down the flavour profile. But it's starting off with a bit of grain. But you also get a nice kind of multi sweetness. So you are. At the, at the front of the mouth. Moves on, and that kind of multi sweetness of getting little accents of just little dried fruits, just very light dried fruit. Imagine what I had with the, was it the otter head? 
beer out there, the dry fruits there. Imagine them kind of flavours, but toned right the way down, and just become little accents in the, the mid tongue rather than more in your face. But that multi sweetness is a light multi sweetness, a heck of a lot lighter compared to the other two. Heck of a lot lighter. In fact, nowhere near in comparison from that point of view. And then, of course, you've still got the little grains there. But you just get also on top of that, you just get a little accents of bitterness, very light bitterness. It's just like he's you know, just giving you a little kind of hint of what's going to be coming in the aftertaste. A little, you know, little pre prep, you know. A foreboding, a little forewarning of, oh, it's going to get a little bit more. And then it goes, it moves on to the kind of aftertaste, and I'll just give it a wee refresh. Yeah. On the aftertaste, you've got the nice multi sweetness, little accents of dried fruit, a little bit of grain, but then the kind of Bitter accents are becoming a bit more stronger and a bit more prevalent in the aftertaste to the point is that when everything else is kind of dissipated you've still got little accents right at the back of the mouth there's little pockets of bitterness and it's actually very really nice and I can't remember whether I had I'm sure I must have done because I drank a whole selection of the Otter beers when I first moved down this, to this area and my neighbours at the time knew of the brewery and everything else and gave us a bit of background about it and uh, I've been to um, other neighbours that had that and that's when I started to notice there was a difference from what I tasted first of all and then what was tasting there and I thought no that that that's strange maybe it was me or maybe it was the environment or maybe it's the cases of what I was eating at the time maybe kind of gave me a kind of bum steer so I think it was about a couple of weeks after I had the the second kind of um how would you say, experience with the, the auto brewery. I thought, right, I'll buy some more to try. And I bought it and I thought, no, I was right. That, that This is exactly the same as it was like a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, God, right, okay. I'm kind of still clear of that. And then I, what I was, I thought, right, I'll come round to it, but I was doing, the, starting to do the beer reviews as well. I, I was doing quite a lot of South West stuff, and I think, well, it would be daft not to do the local brewery. So what I'll do is I'll get a couple in and just kind of try them out and just, you know, just see what they've got again. So I bought a couple of each just to try to do a, a review. And I just thought, well, I'll have a wee session on them one night, and I'll, I'll, I'll try a selection of them before I review them the next day. And I'll be totally honest, the majority of them were bloody dreadful. And I'm thinking, right. What's that about? So I had two goes on them and it wasn't that great, but my first one was actually quite nice. So the first time I tried them were quite nice the two after that were quite bad but I still had a couple left because I'd bought them for reviews but because they were quite bad I thought well I don't really want to kind of slag off the local brewery or things like that so I'll, I'll just leave them I won't have them in reviews and uh, they must have been sitting for a while and I thought I'll get a couple of beers and I was looking through and uh, most of the beers I had were for review and the ones that I, I did have that weren't for review, turned out to be the auto brewery stuff. I thought, right, I'll, I've got a fancy beer anyway, so I'll chuck them in the fridge and uh, I'm going to have them tonight. And again, it was strange because some of them were a heck of a lot better than the last time. And both bottles, all the bottles were bought at the same time, but there was a difference. But then I looked at the 
the kind of the numbers and on the bottles and that type of stuff looking by the barcodes and everything else and uh, the barcodes were different um, which was a bit kind of strange so I thought well I'll buy some more again and then I bought some more again and they were quite nice okay fine right okay right so I thought right I'll, I'll keep that in mind and I'll do another review hence where we're at just now and I've done basically two already and there's this strange underlying sweetness that's never been there before has now bloody appeared so I find it's quite a hit and miss the brewery and uh, this one seems to be a hit it is a nicer beer a lot nicer than the other two almost to the point as you think it's actually come from a different brewer because it just doesn't have this underlying sweetness plus there's a nice balance to it and the flavour profiles that are there I mean I'm not saying there's lots of flavour profiles there but the f there is some nice flavour profiles and they're quite interesting but the flavour profiles that are there are very nice so they are very nice um, and it's just a strange one I just find this it's very hard to recommend this brewery because they've proven a couple of times that yes they can brew a, brew a nice beer of course they can they can brew a nice beer and it's very enjoyable and then other times that I've tried it thinking what the fuck is that is it me am I going mental or something was like <laughs> didn't taste like that before and again when I was doing these reviews the two previous ones I'm going through my mind as I'm actually doing the video thinking the fuck is this bloody sweetness come from but don't remember that ever being there it's not very nice anyway what the hell you know what I mean it's like uh, are they tweaking it are they trying to get trying to kind of perfect it or something and you know it's like I mean, the only thing is either they keep tweaking the recipe to try and improve it and sometimes it doesn't work and think, oh, well, sod it, we'll fire it anyway. Because at the end of the day, it's a smaller brewery and they can't just pour, sh you know, these type of kind of experiments and that type of stuff down the, down the drain. So we might as well get it out there. Or is there a fluctuation in the supplier? So it's a case of certain times of the year that, what they get from the supplier is affecting the beer so at certain points of the year they are, they're brewing a nice beer and then the ingredients following the same recipe isn't really working out or are they just that type of brewery where is the case is though they're a bit off the cuff they work to a kind of kind of recipe but at the end of the day, there's room for manoeuvre and that type of stuff. And yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. I mean, it could be that. I mean, I, I honestly don't know which is which. Although, I will admit, like I've said before, the people around about Hornetton can be a bit strange. And maybe, well, I have spoken to the the people that uh, run the auto brewery and I found them a bit kind of strange anyway. So, um maybe they're just the type of people where they just right well let's see what happens you know maybe it's that type of scenario i don't know it wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't surprise me with people from Hornington because you know it's as easy as you can find a sane one you'll find a nutter you know from that point of view it's, it's a bit of a strange one i don't live in i used to live in Hornington that's why i know they're all bloody crazy but I used to do some kind of business things in Hornington and uh, I met quite a lot of the locals through the business and uh, like I said, as, as, as much as I can find somebody to have a normal kind of interesting conversation with, Jesus, just as easily I can find a complete and utter thinking. <laughs> you know, as a conversation is going on and just taking two steps back and you're getting further and further away from them thinking, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the minute they blink, I'm turning and running. You know, it's that type of scenario. You know, we can blink for fuck's sake, blink for God's sake. I'm going to run in a minute. You know, it's like nutter from that point of view. But yeah, 
So maybe it's a bit to do with that. I don't know. But this is actually a nicer beer. But it's strange because it's completely different from the other two. Whereas the other two, there was accents of flavours that was linking them together, which you're just really not getting. With this one. And again, it's roughly about the £2 a bottle mark, roughly. It's maybe slightly over if you're buying it from a certain supermarket. Which is strange though, because you buy certain, you go to certain supermarkets and they only stop. So, I mean, it's quite funny. I can go to one supermarket and the two previous ones that I bought, they only stock them, they don't stock the Otter Ale. Oh, what's the green one? I'm trying to remember what the green one is. There's a green one there as well, and I can't remember what that one's called. But they don't stock the green one or the Otter Ale. But then I go to another one that stocks the Otter Ale and the green one, but doesn't stock the other two. So it's kind of all over the place to a certain degree, so... But yeah, right, we've gone on for too long with this one, so what would I give this out of 10? Well, it's more my type of beer. Um, and it is a, a nicer flavour, far better than the other two. Which I'll be totally honest, from my point of view, wouldn't be difficult because it doesn't have that horrible sweetness, so straight away that was a bonus. But for price and everything else, what would I give it? It is quite a nice balanced beer. And uh, it's that strange one. Would I recommend it? Well, what I'm drinking now, yes, I would recommend it. But the problem is, though, I'm kind of slightly fearful that if I bought another bottle a couple of months down the line, would I still get the same kind of experience from it? I mean, the same flavours and everything else. I honestly don't know. It's a bit of a gamble. So that's what I want to kind of... That's the caveat I would say. Would I recommend it? Yes. But there's a caveat. Well, if you buy a bottle and it doesn't kind of emulate the type of experience and flavours that I'm getting, then, well, I'm just kind of forewarning you that there's a possibility that could happen. But from what I'm tasting just now from this bottle, it's a nice beer, nice balance, there's a nice kind of bitterness to it, there's a nice kind of continuous underlying sweetness from the malt, there's a little accents, light accents of dried fruit and things, you know, so there's some nice light flavours there, but they're interesting and they're nicely balanced. So on that basis, I'm going to give it a 7. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I would recommend it, but... Remember, there is a caveat there that you might not get the same experience that I'm getting today. But in saying that, a couple of months down the line, I could buy a bottle of this and I might not get the same experience that I'm having now. So at least this one's been documented and I've done the flavour profiles and everything else. And it'll be interesting to see what it'll be like if I try this. I'll give it to the kind of into the kind of July, August time, and I'll, I'll get a bottle, and we'll just see what it's like. And, because uh, like I say, I have had a bit of a hit and miss with this brewery, and uh, while other ones have said they've enjoyed it, but I'll be totally honest, my view is, try the Otter Bright and the Otter Head, and see if you notice this kind of off sweetness that's there that just really spoils the beers, to be totally honest. Because other people, I don't think other people are kind of questioning and think, don't believe that I'm actually tasting this, but it's, it's true. It's not there in this one, which is quite good. So yes, yeah, so this is a 7 out of 10. Would I recommend it? Yes, but I've told you the caveat. It's... Two pound roughly a bottle for a 500ml bottle, then to tell you the alcohol content, but I'll repeat it, it's four and a half percent. And if you go to certain supermarkets, you might pay more than two pound. You might be getting closer to two pound twenty, two pound thirty. It just depends how greedy that supermarket is. But yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers and bye for now.